The gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from Texas is rec recognized. Uh, I'll yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, uh, nobody in this chamber uh, believes that there isn't work to do in the area of ensuring that uh, crimes are not committed against any American, but in particular due to their race, their color, their national origin, or anything about who they are. Uh, many on this side of the aisle, um, including the gentle ladies who spoke before from California, raised concern about the sort of uh, nature of this legislation and a lot of the concerns that have been raised about its continued focus on hate crimes in many ways at the expense of our focusing on crime, crime itself. Um, in the findings in this piece of legislation, of course, we referenced the terrible tragedy that unfolded in Atlanta, Georgia. And much of that was a rush to be included in the form of hate crimes when the facts being borne out in investigation among prosecutors and the investigators in Georgia are indicating that that was not at all or didn't seem to be the motivation. I use careful words like seem to be because as a former federal prosecutor, I like to wait until you do the investigation before you jump to the conclusion of what was the motive or what actually went into the crime at hand. And I think we do our nation a disservice when we, as in the words of Chief Justice Roberts, uh, when he said that it is a sordid business that's divvying us up by race, I think we do our nation a disservice when we spend every waking moment on this floor divvying us up by race. And increasingly, that's what we're doing. This legislation is well-intended, but this legislation in the eyes of many in this body is flawed in terms of uh, having in it uh, things like the uh, uh, Equity Health um, uh, Commission, or, you know, uh, I'm sorry, the Health Equity Task Force. Um, designating an officer employee DOJ whose responsibility shall be to facilitate the expedited review of hate crimes. We have provisions in the legislation to encourage the collection of data, but encourage local law enforcement to collect data on hate crimes but to seek to do so specifically to focus on hate crimes. And it is the contention of many of my colleagues that this is in fact um, a continued focus of division in our country rather than focusing on the fact of the crime itself, the murder itself. We all, of course, thought that the crime in Georgia was, was awful. But again, the crime doesn't seem to have been motivated by race but yet it's being brought into the context of a hate crime. Perhaps we should spend some time investigating sex trafficking and human trafficking in the form of massage parlors and people who are basically indentured servants or slaves in the form of the sex trade, the cartels that are along our border and the southern border that are forcing young girls into the sex trade, the people that were bound in a car in Bernie, Texas, in suburban San Antonio, being forced into the sex trade en route to a stash house in Houston, Texas, because they were being run by the cartel de Nereste of Los Etas at a Nuevo Laredo. Literally just occurring in the district I represent in Bernie, Texas. Perhaps we can focus on this kind of criminal activity and what that actually means for young women and young individuals in our country. We talk about, is it a hate crime when we've seen data of a young black male in San Francisco hitting an elderly Asian man on the streets of San Francisco. We've seen that footage. Probably hate crime, but it's a crime. If that guy was a white guy or a black guy, it's a crime. It's a crime going after this, this elderly man, a citizen, an American citizen. And I think when we think about justice, the reason the blindfold exists on Lady Justice is we're supposed to have blind justice. We all acknowledge that we have not had blind justice at many points in the history of our country, but that blind justice is what we seek when we seek equal justice under law. I reserve.